Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 24th of August. Prime Minister Modi inaugurates 2600-bed hospital in Faridabad, says India on mission mode to transform education and health sector. New case filed against Pakistan's ousted PM Imran Khan for violating ban on public gatherings. And Taliban imposed harsh limits on religious freedom in Afghanistan, says US panel report. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday inaugurated a 2600-bed private hospital in northern Faridabad city that is equipped with cutting-edge technology including a centralized fully automated laboratory aimed at boosting healthcare infrastructure in the national capital region. PM later travelled to Mohali and dedicated a cancer hospital and research centre to the nation. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday inaugurated State of Art Amrita Hospital in Northern Haryana State's Faridabad city with an aim to boost the availability of modern medical infrastructure in the national capital region. Founded by Mata Amrita Nandamai Amma, the super specialty hospital, equipped with 2600 beds, is the largest and state of the art hospital in the region. Speaking on the occasion, PM Modi said, India is a country where healthcare and spirituality are closely linked. He hailed the public-private partnership PPP model at the inaugural event and said this model helps reach the grassroots and ensures upliftment in the remoter spots. COVID-19 was a perfect example of a successful spiritual private partnership that helped create awareness and implement the world's largest vaccination drive, he added. कि सरकारें पूरी निष्ठा और ईमानदारी से मिशन मोड में देश के स्वास्थ्य और शिक्षा क्षेत्र का काया कल्प करें इसके लिए सामाजिक संस्थाओं को भी प्रोत्साहन दिया जा रहा है प्राइवेट सेक्टर के साथ पार्टनरशिप करके प्रभावी पीपीपी मॉडल तैयार हो रहा है Prime Minister Modi later in the day also dedicated Homi Baba Cancer Hospital and Research Centre to the nation in Punjab's Mohali district in an endeavour to provide world-class cancer care to the residents of Punjab and neighbouring states and union territories. The cancer hospital is a tertiary care hospital of a 300-bed capacity and is equipped with modern facilities to treat all types of cancers using every available treatment modality. Several Indian states are facing the brunt of the floods triggered by heavy rainfall. While the situation has eased in eastern Odisha state, swollen rivers have inundated several low-lying areas affecting thousands of people while authorities grapple to provide relief. Floods triggered by heavy rainfall has left a trail of destruction in parts of India's eastern Odisha state with swollen rivers inundating several low-lying areas. While the situation in Odisha has somewhat eased and the government has said the peak flood is over, over 900,000 people remain affected in the state. As many as 251 villages in the districts of Balasore, Mayurbanj, Jajpur and Bhadrak have been hit hard due to the deluge. The recent rainfall was caused by a deep depression over the Bay of Bengal. Villagers in Puri district said though they are getting food and other relief from authorities, they have faced heavy losses to their crops. Meanwhile, Chief Minister of Central Madhya Pradesh monitored the flood situation in the state while rescue workers were engaged in relief operations after incessant rains over the past two days. Several rivers in the state such as Narmada, Betwa and Tapti were in spate while houses were damaged and crops destroyed due to the flood. In news from Pakistan, Pakistani police has filed a new case against former Prime Minister Imran Khan and top leaders of his opposition PTI party for violating a ban on public gatherings in capital Islamabad, reports have suggested. 
Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah had earlier said that if Khan's request for bail in and another case of contempt is rejected by the court, the government will have no choice but to arrest him. A new case has been registered by police against Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan and top leaders of his Pakistan Tehreek Insaf Party PTI for violating a ban on public gatherings in the national capital, reports have suggested. According to the FIR, Khan violated the ban as he addressed a massive protest rally on August 20 in Islamabad to show solidarity with his close aide Shabazz Gill, who was arrested on August 9 for allegedly inciting mutiny in the army. Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah in a TV interview on Tuesday said that if Khan's request for bail in a terror case filed against him is rejected by the court, the government will have no choice but to arrest him. Khan has been granted protective bail by the Islamabad High Court till Thursday in a terrorism case, after which he is expected to attempt to obtain pre-arrest bail. The High Court earlier on Tuesday issued a show-cause notice to the PTI chief and summoned him on August 31 in contempt proceedings initiated against him for passing controversial remarks against a female judge at the August 20 rally. Khan had allegedly threatened to file cases against Islamabad's top police officials and warned additional district and sessions judge Zeba Chaudhary, who had approved physical remand of Gill, that she would also face dire consequences. Moving on, after much anticipation of attempts by the Pakistan government to pass the 15th Constitutional Amendment Bill in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, the government has decided to withdraw the legislation amid massive protests, reports have suggested. Critics claim that the move aimed to revoke the special status of the illegally occupied territory and snatch rights of the locals. Amid massive protests by locals and political activists in Pakistan administered Kashmir against the proposed 15th constitutional amendment, the Pakistan government has withdrawn the legislation that aimed to grant provincial status to the illegally occupied region, reports have suggested. The introduction of the bill sparked public outrage with critics strongly objecting to the government's plan to alter the region's constitutional status and snatch rights of the locals. Activists claimed that the bill was aimed to recreate the defunct overarching Kashmir Council which would have deemed the hold of Kashmiri political parties as anti-democratic. आज इस काल पर जिला मुजफ्फराबाद के तमाम मकाने में फिगर के लोग उसमें ताजर है उसमें ट्रांसपोर्ट तलबा फुकला आज उन्होंने सड़कों पे आकर ये बात साबित कर दी कि वो पंद्रहवीं तरमीम को किसी सूरत नहीं मानते Locals have long blamed that Pakistan exploits the rich forest and water resources in the region while they do not get any benefits they say they are not even consulted before natural resources from the region are explored and exploited by Pakistan. Moving on, a report by a bipartisan U.S. commission has highlighted that conditions for religious freedom in Afghanistan have drastically deteriorated since the Taliban seized power last year. The report states that Taliban re-established a ministry that has targeted women by enforcing a strict code of dress and behavior including covering their faces and limiting their movement, education and many other things. A bipartisan U.S. commission said on Tuesday that conditions have drastically deteriorated in Afghanistan for the religious freedom since the Taliban seized power last year as the last U.S.-led foreign troops pulled out after 20 years of war. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom in a report said that the Sunni Muslim extremist harsh enforcement of their hardline version of Islam has negatively affected religious minorities, women, the LGBTQ community and those who follow no faith. The congressionally created panel issued the report nine days after the Taliban marked a year of their return to power. The report states that the Taliban is responsible for the deaths of dozens of Hazaras, an ethnic minority that follows Shiite Islam and failed to protect them from attacks by the regional branch of Islamic State, a Taliban rival. 
The report added that the Taliban re-established a ministry that includes morality police who have targeted women by enforcing a strict code of dress and behavior, including covering their faces and limited their movement, education, participation in sports and right to work. The international community has made ensuring human rights, especially rights of girls and women, as key demands for any future recognition of the Taliban administration. Afghanistan's assets, which have been remained frozen due to sanctions, have severely hampered banking, business and development. In news from Bangladesh, the United Nations Special Envoy on Myanmar, Noilene Hazar, visited refugee camps in Cox's Bazar on Tuesday as part of a four-day visit to Bangladesh. Hazar's tour included talks with camp officials, a walk through food stores and a health center, as well as with refugees. According to UNHCR Communications Officer Regina de La Portilla, Hazer would be paying particular attention to the Rohingya population living in the country as refugees. During her trip, more than a million Rohingya are living in squalid camps in southern Bangladesh, comprising the world's largest refugee settlement, with little prospect of returning to Myanmar, where they are mostly denied citizenships and other rights. The vast majority fled to neighboring Bangladesh during a military crackdown in 2017 that the United Nations has said was carried out with a genocidal intent. Myanmar denies genocide, saying it was waging a legitimate campaign against insurgents who attacked police post. Myanmar is facing charges of genocide at the International Court of Justice in The Hague over the violence. In terms of uh, repatriation, uh, most refugees we talk to, they want to return home, but only when it's safe and uh, proper to do so, when they can return and, and know that their rights will be ensured. And part of talking to refugees is understanding what they feel right now towards the situation in their country. It's very important to know and to inform future decisions what refugees need so they can feel safe when they return. Mainly, it will be access to documentation, it will be about access to rights, to services, including education, freedom of movement, and being recognized as citizens of a country. A two-day organic farming exhibition was held this week in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory to educate farmers and growers about the importance of organic products and new schemes, technologies and overall promotion of the agriculture sector. Departmental entrepreneurs, progressive farmers and growers showcased their products during the exhibition. Authorities in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory organized a two-day organic farming exhibition this week to promote agriculture sector and educate people about the benefits of organic products. Organized by the Department of Agriculture at Shedi Kashmir International Conference Center on the banks of famed Dal Lake, more than 20 stalls were installed by departmental entrepreneurs, progressive farmers and growers. In recent months, the local government has given impetus to natural and organic farming that can effectively tackle the challenges posed by climate change and soil degradation. The exhibition also provided a platform to young entrepreneurs that had small manufacturing or processing units including honey jam in displaying and promoting their products. Look, we have the niche products here, our speciality in Kashmir, whatever crop is, whether it's agriculture related or articulture related, we didn't reach the same people in India. This was the case when we were trying to market it, so in Kashmir, this is a lot of work in the name of Kashmir. The purpose of this specific exhibition was also to educate farmers and growers about the importance of organic products and new schemes, technologies, and overall promotion of the agriculture sector. इस तरह की ये जो conventions होती हैं, इसमें जितने भी stakeholders participate करते हैं, definitely ये सब के लिए win-win situation होती है, क्योंकि जो सरकारी machinery है, उनको भी direct feedback मिलता है कि farming community की क्या problems हैं, और उनको किस तरह के solutions वो खुद propose कर रहे हैं. Agriculture is the backbone of the region's economy, and it generates employment. Many farmers have adopted organic farming to increase productivity and grow pest-free vegetables, which helps them lead a better life. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.